welcome to a new vault log. Today I'm going to show you how I built an automatic plant watering system. I started this project to solve a problem that uh, I was facing. I have these two pineapple plants and uh, you know how it happens. Sometimes you are away from home for a couple of days and there isn't anyone to water them and there are some days when you forget to put some water to the plants. And there is an important thing I noticed and that's kind of obvious but plants grow better when there is a constant supply of water. Uh, you don't want to put too much water, you don't want to keep them too dry, but just the right amount of water will keep these uh, plants growing at a nice and constant rate. So an automatic uh, plant watering system could take care of this problem and put just the right amount of uh, water at uh, preset intervals. Another goal for this project was to build it using uh, only parts that I have in my lab without uh, buying anything uh, uh, special or designing any anything custom for this project. So uh, as you will see some hacking needed to be done to reuse uh, some parts in this project. My requirements for this project were a microcontroller for running my algorithm, a real-time clock for keeping track of time, a relay or transistor output control, a uh, buzzer and uh, maybe LED for signaling, water pump plus accessories like uh, hose and uh, sprinkler heads, a battery to power everything, and a water container to hold a minimum of 10 liters. So we'll go through each of these uh, requirements and see how we can fulfill it. As the main processing board, I first wanted to use an STM8 microcontroller from ST just to give it a try, because I never used them before. I had this uh, small dev board for STM8 in my parts bin, but immediately I realized that I don't have the required programmer for this line of microcontrollers, so I had to switch to something else. I could have used an STM32 board to keep my idea of uh, working with a new microcontroller, and I had the programmer required for the STM32 series, but it would have been a seriously uh, overkill for this project. So in the end I went with the good old Atmega 328 and the Arduino environment. Although I'm not a big fan of Arduino, I use it from time to time to quickly test things out. And in fact this was the very first working project I built using the Arduino IDE. I didn't want to waste time to design and etch a custom PCB for this microcontroller so I turned my attention to my past projects bin where I found this board that had everything I needed. This board has the Atmega 328 microcontroller with all the pins broken out to various pads. It has the, these two fused relay outputs which are transistor controlled from the Atmega 328. It had the required bypass caps and uh, supporting passives. It has the uh, crystal oscillator pads and the voltage regulator. I designed this board a couple of years back for projects where I needed to control uh, remotely two outputs over GSM network. So that's why we have this uh, rather big landing pad here. This is where the GSM modem should sit. As a bonus, I also have the enclosure for which this board was designed and I can use that too. Maybe I'll talk more about this design in a future video where I discuss my uh, past projects. As mentioned, I needed some way of accurately keeping track of time. A real-time clock I see could handle that job and I had the BQ32000 from Texas Instruments in my parts bin. This is not the best RTC you can get on the market, but I got it as a free sample and I didn't need too, ma too many features in this project, so it should probably do the job just fine. There will be a link to the uh, BQ32000 in the description, but I will also put some links to some uh, better real-time clock ICs. This RTC needs some backup power to keep counting while you remove the main power from the circuit. For that you could either use a supercapacitor or a backup battery. I had a 0.1 farad supercapacitor in my parts bin, but considering the rather high current consumption of the BQ32000, this supercapacitor would not handle the backup time for long 
so instead I used the CR2032 battery for backup. I had to etch this uh, small PCB to hold the real-time clock IC and its passives and after finishing I ran some small jumper wires for the RTC PCB to the actual main PCB. The battery socket was placed over the old modem LAN pattern because I had some free space in that corner. A quick Arduino test confirmed the RTC was alive and that the backup battery was working as it should when main power was removed. The main board had plenty of LED outputs but it didn't have a buzzer so I had to add one of these uh, cheap eBay active buzzers. This kind of buzzer just needs power applied to its uh, pins and it has an internal oscillating circuit for producing the sound. You don't need to worry about configuring a PWM output just a simple I.O. slash transistor combo will do. I also needed a power source to run this whole circuit and since I didn't want to use a power brick or some open frame AC to DC converter I decided to run the whole circuit of battery power. I had this 12 volt lead acid battery on my bench for the past few years and aside from using it to test various circuits it never got used to something serious so I decided to use it in this project. The 5 amp hour capacity should keep my system running for weeks until it needs a recharge. So far I have the electronics covered and although not optimized for this particular project they will do the job just fine and I don't know about you but I always have this good feeling whenever I hack and repurpose electronics. I also needed a way of pumping the water to the plants and for that I had a couple of submersible DC water pumps I got off eBay a long time ago with the same project in mind but I never got to use them at that time. I will post some links in the description with some pumps that you could use for this job. Remember, the pumps I'm showing here are submersible and that means they need to stay underwater to function properly. Don't try to keep them outside of water and run a hose from the water tank to the intake because it would probably won't work that way. In, in the end, in my project, I uh, used this type of pump because I noticed it could deliver a higher volume of uh, water in the same time. You will also need some hose to take the water from the water pump output to the actual plant and some splitters for that particular hose diameter to split the water supply to several plants. I used some 8mm hose for the main output and then split that into two 6mm smaller pieces going to each of my plants. To ensure a more even distribution of water in the plant pot you will need some kind of uh, sprinkler head and I had these uh, small ones which I also got from eBay but they're not very good. I think they're designed for a higher working pressure so they don't exactly sprinkle in my case. You could also improvise and just punch a series of smaller holes in a piece of tubing. Because I didn't have any soil moisture sensors and even if I had those degrade in time because of corrosion I decided to build an open loop system. That means my control loop doesn't care about the soil moisture. Instead, it will read the RTC and operate the pump for a certain amount of time at some preset intervals. For that to work, I needed to know how much water I am pumping per second. So the first thing I did after connecting all the tubing to the pump was to test its volume flow. I timed how long it takes for the pump to pump 2 liters of water. You then divide the volume of water, in our case 2 liters, to the total elapsed time and you get the volume per second. That worked out to about 15 seconds on time to pump 150 milliliters of water. This also includes a small dead time at the start because it takes time for the water to travel about 1.5 meters of tubing until it reaches the plants. But these numbers shouldn't mean much to you as you will adjust them according to your needs should you decide to build this project. Now let's talk about the software running on the Arduino. As you see right at the top I'm including rtclib.h because that library will provide the required interface for reading the real-time clock. There is no need to reinvent the wheel if the library exists and it's well written, use it. Next up I use some constants to define the alarm hours at which the system should start watering the plants. I want the system to run two times a day and for each moment I needed the matching hour and minute. 
Next, I define the time the pump stays on and remember I calculated and adjusted this earlier according to my installation. This is declared in seconds multiplied by 10. The multiplication is needed because I use this number lower in the code where the timer interrupt triggers each 100 milliseconds. So to make our units match up, I need to multiply the number by 10. Next, I define the pins for the LEDs, buzzer and relay outputs as well as some other variables used throughout the code. Next, everything that happens in the setup loop is pretty much easy to understand for anyone who has ever worked with Arduino. I am basically configuring the peripherals used in this project. For example, I am enabling things like the serial port, the timer interrupts, and I am configuring the real-time clock IC. Moving down to our main loop, this is where all the action happens, so let me explain a bit how this is structured. First, the system reads the current time from the RTC. Next, the system checks if the battery voltage is above the cutoff voltage. If it is, the execution continues and checks if the current time matches the first preset alarm hour and if that alarm didn't already trigger today. If the battery is below the cutoff voltage, the system will not start the pump, instead it will just sound an alarm for one minute every hour to let me know I need to recharge the battery. Next, the system checks if the current time matches the preset alarm minute. If the alarm minute is matched, record the alarm day so that we know the alarm was triggered today so we don't repeat it. Next, signal the LED, turn the pump on and set the is pump on flag. Now the timer interrupt will let the pump run for the preset amount of time and in the end it will turn the pump off as well as resetting all the required flags. As you can see, not much going on. Quite a simple operation, so let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about this code. Now, let me show you the system in action when the alarm is triggered and you will see the water being pumped to the actual plants. You might ask, what is the total cost for this project? And the answer is not much in my case, because I used in-house parts. The hacked MCU board plus enclosure contain about $15 worth of parts. The DIY BQ32000 real-time clock cost me nothing. That was a free sample from Texas Instruments. The lead-acid battery was $10 and I'm quite happily I finally used it for something useful. The DC brushless water pump was $4 ship. The hose plus the splitter and the sprinkler heads were about $6. And the 20 liter water container was $4. The total amount is around $39 counting the cost for all the parts used, but in reality I only had to buy the water container plus hose plus the two-way splitter, so that was around $10. There are some improvements that I would do in the next revision of this project. First, I would design a custom PCB and possibly switch to MOSFET control instead of relay control. This could save some cost and space. Next, I would run the whole circuit of 18650 lithium cells, something like two parallel 3 series arrangement, together with a charging circuit, with the possibility to control the charging current from the MCU. This would make the whole thing more compact. I would add solar panel input for constant recharging of the battery pack, because I already have the sunlight in there, so why not use it? And this is where the charging current adjustment could come in handy for doing some basic MPPT. I would also add a sensor for water level monitoring. The water level could then be signaled by uh, means of LED or buzzer, or through a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module to make things really fancy. The watering could be optimized by combining the RTC with a soil moisture sensor to output a certain amount of water in a certain interval of time in an automatic fashion. The software can be further improved by using a watchdog timer 
to ensure the MCU will not lock up keeping the pump on for too much causing trouble. It would also be nice to have a Bluetooth or battery at the Wi-Fi module for firmware update and parameter config. So let me know in the comment section below how you feel about all these uh, possible improvements that I mentioned. For now the system works okay so I don't really feel the need for implementing all these uh, improvements. But I have to admit adding all these uh, all these improvements could make the system market ready which means anyone without any knowledge of electronics could just use it uh, easily. A schematic will be linked in the description of this video together with links for all the stuff shown in the video so that anyone can build their own system. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and also follow me on Twitter because I share interesting stuff over there as well. And as always, feel free to leave a comment or hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.